All right, welcome back to another Touch Designer tutorial. Today we are going to be working on this instancing New York City inspired geometries that move to some chops. We're also going to be looking, taking a look at some texture operators, some noise, some blurs, and doing some math in order to run our little SOPTA instance and also do some post processing in the end. And this will be a part one of part two, or a two part series. So we're going to start out here and kind of build our network and then go from there. So let's get into it. So first thing we are going to do is we are going to recreate this. So let's close that out and we're going to add a base. We're going to name this base NYC and go inside of it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start by building my camera network. And so I'm going to add a camera. I'm going to add a geometry or I'm going to add a uh, rectangle so I can kind of get like the street plane. So add a rectangle. I'm going to add this to a geometry. I'm going to put a trope. Hold on, hold on a second here. OBS for some reason wants to always make my nodes move a little crazy, but it's okay. So we're going to put a transform right here because we're going to scale this to a certain extent. And uh, then we are going to add a render. We're going to put a null at the end. We're going to put a transform back here just in case you happen to be working off a a checkerboard type of look. I have mine turned off, but we're going to add alpha one and then comp over input. So we do have black. Okay. So we're going to take this and we're also going to add a null here. So we can kind of have our camera look at something and then point it down. This just kind of starts to give us reference of where we are. Cause when we start adding some of the, the, uh, rectangles, it, it starts to kind of like, you can get lost in the camera a little bit. So we're going to take this, we're going to take our camera, we're going to do a look at the null. And in here, I'm going to adjust my camera and say 0.2. So I'm kind of looking at the top of the box. I can turn this on now so we can see like what's going on here, but let's add a material to it. So now we can see our box. And one of the things when I first start these out is sometimes I like to add a wireframe too. So I can, cause you're just looking at a blank color here. So if I put the wireframe on here, then I can kind of see like where I'm at space, if I need to pivot it, things like that. So in here, in my camera, oops, I adjusted this to the wrong spot. See, that's why I didn't even see it move. So in my camera, now I'm going to take this and go to point two, or let's say, let's say two. So we're kind of seeing like a little bit of the top of it. Um, and this is a rectangle, so I'm going to also switch this. So I see it on the the uh, ZX plane. And for one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this. So I want to scale this to, let's say, 200, because I want this very long slope that we're looking for. And now I can see by looking in this and my camera, like um, my perspective is a little bit off. So I'm going to change this back to uh, 0.2. And it's kind of like now I'm looking down the road. Right, so I can change this constant, put this back on here, change this to the material, and I'm just going to change the constant color to like a gray, so I'm not just staring at this big white screen. Right, so now we kind of have our road going down there, um, and, it, and it seems like it's a little bit big, so this is some adjustments we're going to make down the road, but um, one of the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to skinny it out a little bit, because I know automatically I just want it a little bit smaller. Okay, so let's use some of our textures so we can build our buildings around this. And <clears throat> in our top, we are gonna first select um, a noise because we're building this through noise. We're gonna take this noise and we're gonna take this uh, and add this to RGB or 32-bit float RGB. And I'm gonna do one other thing here. I'm gonna create a constant and in this constant, I'm going to set some values. So I'm going to create four different things here. I'm going to take, take my resolution, res x, res y, and then I'm going to do my instant x and instance 
y. And I'm going to change these values. 1920, because I happen to have the commercial version. But if you're on the uh, non-starting version, you're going to be 1270 by 720. And then I'm going to change this to 200. I'm going to change this to 100. And I'm going to take these values. And let's call this uh, data. I'm going to select black down here because black is my favorite color, right? So we're going to go in here and I'm going to use these two values right off the bat in my noise and take these into my resolution. And you're going to see why I'm doing this later is when we start instancing color, you want everything to be the same uh, so your network doesn't break. So we're going to take this. We're going to take this out into a ramp. Oops, that is the wrong one. Real sense is not a ramp. We're going to take this into a ramp and we're going to copy and paste this. So we're going to have two of them. This is going to start our, our red, green, and blue. And so in this, we are going to go here first and we're going to take out everything. So we're going to go into just red, no blue. And in this one, we are going to switch this to just green, no blue. So we have our red and green. And then we are going to add a math to this. Now let's see. Oh, there it is. Yep. Okay. So we're going to take a math, copy and paste this, drag it down, connect my nodes. I'm going to do some adjustments here. But first, I'm going to change some things in my noise. So I'm going to change my offset to zero, my exponent to zero. Let's put the amplitude at one, see what happens. And I'm going to change my period to 0 0.02. So I have a smaller scape here. I'm going to take this ramp right here. I'm going to change this to a vertical because I'm looking at these axes as we do this. So if I take a reorder here and start to populate this, you'll see as we put these in and we select for our red, we're going to do input one. And for our green, we're going to do input two. You can see we're creating our little UV there. And this can start to push out these geometries, right? So uh, right here, we're going to add a null. We're just going to name this instance. And inside, we're going to create another geometry here because this is our little streetscape. Oops. And so we're going to use a box to start our buildings. So we connect the box and go here. We're going to change this into our size. So we're going to go with 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and I'm going to change this to 10. Right, so we have a nice skinny skyscraper. We're going to take this and go this into a geometry. Now we have two geometries, and this is where you can start to rename stuff. I'm just going to name this street. I'm going to name this buildings. And so now I'm kind of I have an idea where things are sitting in this space, right? Um, so I'm going to do a little housekeeping here to select some of these things, move around and watch this. The whole building is going to move with it because I forgot to unselect that. I'm going to push that back and there we go, right? So in my little wireframe, I can put this wireframe on the buildings right now and use this as my reference. So we have the building in space, right? And it's sitting out there, but nothing, we haven't instanced it yet. So we have to go into um, our buildings geometry, turn on instancing. We're going to drag this into our default instant IP. And at first, before I do this, I'm going to switch my ranges here, my math. So I'm going to go from a range of 0 to 1 to negative 20 to 20. And in this math, I'm going to go from negative 10 to 10. And let's see, my box is going to be, yep, it's 10 high. And we're going to start to add this in there. So in our buildings, we have our instance in. If we turn in our X to our R, now we can see we have some wireframes all around. We turn our Z into G. Now we have our boxes in space, right? And this, is, again, is why I'm using wireframe. Because if we go to a constant and we add this constant, you can see that it will definitely start to get a lot of different things going on in the screen where it just looks like a big white wall, right? So. This just helps you when you're dealing in this space of like, so you can kind of see how things are looking and where we need to, to push them and you know, those diff different types of things. So right now there's, everything is sitting on top of each other. So um, before I kind of move some of this stuff around, I'm going to add a, a blur into this. Um, 
And this gives us the ability to kind of like create that path in the middle that I was looking for. So I'm going to do a blur here. And um, the other thing too is I'm going to add a rectangle to create that blur, right? So we're going to go into this and we're going to select a rectangle. And we're going to put this noise into the rectangle. We're going to take this into the blur. And let's get this a little so everybody can see it there. We're in our rectangle, we're going to change the size, right? So we're going to change this to uh, one. And that's obviously the wrong way. So we're going to change this to point two. And then we're going to change this to one. And, you know, so this again, using our constants and everything that we're doing, this is an idea right here where we can go into our comment page. And since I created these reses, I can bring this over here to this and start to scale out how we're going to be looking as we enter out, right? So there we go. And so here we are now in, in our blur. What we're going to do is I want a narrow lane I know. So that is probably too big. So I'm going to go into this to 0, 2. And maybe that's too small. So let's say 0, 6. And this is, again, you're just looking at it and seeing like how it's going to work, right? And this I'm going to pipe into the reorder. And a reorder doesn't see it yet, but this is going to take place of the blue. So if we go into here and we have our blue, and this is how it's been, you know, pushing out, right? So our blue scape is going to take away some of this lane. And so this is the start of it. And this is where you have to, in this rectangle, and I'm going to do some different things here where I'm going to change my fill color to black. And I'm going to bring up the black alpha to also create a space on this lane. And I'm going to look how everything is looking here. And let's see, do we have this? This is vertical. This is horizontal. We have this. Let's make sure we select it through to float RGB. Yes. And this is where I'll also add another camera. So I can kind of take a look of like what's going on in the space, right? Because it's, it's kind of busy at first, but I can see the little path there but I just see like all these wireframe buildings, right? So I have to create that space. So how do I do that, right? If I go into here and if I go to my, since I didn't do my Y and I do my scale right here and I select B, now I've created a path, right? And so how does this look? Well, at least it gave us the ability to kind of see what's going on. You can see it in the streetscape here, right? So you can see where everything is happening and this is the lane that we want to go to. And this is the infinity look that I was looking for, right? So a couple different things is we can now change our buildings over to a constant so we can see how they will look like in space. So now we see and we can start to adjust like how our path is laying and everything like that. But what fun is it to look at just some white and black buildings? So let's create a little color constant here. Um, or a little color noise. So we're going to take our noise and we're going to add a noise here and add a null. And this I'm going to add a level in case I want to switch some of the colors as we're going through. So if I don't want all of them. And <clears throat> in our noise, I'm going to take these same two uh, values. So we're going to be instanced the right way, right? So again, we don't break it. So we're going to do this. And we're going to turn off monochrome, and we can actually do that in this too. So we're going to take this and turn off monochrome. You can see it, how it adjusted. And this is more what I'm looking for, right? So we have this, we have this going through. And one of the cool things you can always do in these too is if you take this, if you want to see like what they're going to look at, what are the different pixels and things like that, you can change these values in here and it'll start to show like nearest pixel so I can see what, what it is. And this isn't really that helpful in such a big noise field, but if you're just using like a two by 12 or something like that, you can see kind of what it looks like, right? So we take these colors now and we go into our buildings and we go to instancing and we select our color OP right here. And we're just gonna name this color 
you can now see that, uh, go back to the wings. Yep, there we go. So brightness into the color. Whoop. And then select uh, R, G, and B. Now we are getting to somewhere, right? So we can see what's happening in space. We can see where our buildings are, and this is how we can start to adjust things. So in our blur, we can go back here, and this is kind of controlling a lot of it. So this is like this is how I made them go up and down, and we see like where we are in the blur, what is our sample size, you know, how are those different things happening, and this is where you start to play with values and see how everything is going, right? So back in here, I can see my rectangle, and I can see, you know, is this right? Is this the value that I want? Is this taking up the space? Is this drawing over that space where it's creating, you know, um, a field per se? And if I go into my camera, we can see our lane. So I just want, again, that to override those, those types of buildings. And uh, those are the different things that we have to look at and the values that we have to play with in here to say, like, what are we looking for? You know, what is the space that we're looking for? What are the different types of values that we create? And, you know, how do you kind of do those different types of things, right?